Well, it's CES time again, so it's a good time to check in on ATSC 3.0, otherwise known as Next Gen TV. Now, if you haven't heard of ATSC 3.0, we actually did a video a while back that explores the topic. We'll have a link to that video down below in the video description for you to check out. But in a nutshell, ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV is the new standard for over-the-air broadcasting here in the US. And it offers up some new features, including support for higher resolutions, faster frame rates, high dynamic range video, improved audio support, and more. In the coming year, we expect to see 20 or more additional market launches and potentially reaching 50 to 70% of the US population by the end of 2021. And this activity is gonna fuel what happens at retail with a proliferation of devices and visibility of the Next Gen TV logo. But for Next Gen TV to go from concept to commonplace standard, TV stations need to upgrade, new tuners need to be integrated into televisions, and broadcasters need to offer consumers compelling reasons to upgrade. To those ends, the ATSC gathered together some industry leaders this week to discuss the current state of ATSC 3.0 here at the start of 2021. Building upon 2020, where several markets around the country started broadcasting in the new standard, Sinclair's Mark Aitken said we can expect more cities to come online in 2021. Aitken said he's optimistic that more than 80% of the U.S. population will have access to ATSC 3.0 in the near future, and we'll certainly keep an eye on that ongoing process. Aitken also said broadcasters will need to work on providing compelling reasons for consumers to upgrade their gear, including experiences like HDR that they can't get on their ATSC 1.0 sets. Meanwhile, Nick Kelsey of Silicon Dust highlighted his company's HD Home Run Connect 4K, a gateway device that offers a pair of ATSC 3.0 tuners on board. The Connect 4K had a successful Kickstarter campaign last year, and it's now available on the company's site. As far as adoption goes, the Consumer Technology Association, Steve Koenig, said the CTA expects around 2% of TVs to feature ATSC 3.0 this year, climbing to around 31% by 2024. For now, Koenig said ATSC 3.0, much like 8K TV, looks to be a higher-end premium feature, but he expects the standard to become more commonplace in the near future. And while we're on the subject of next-gen TV, let's take a quick look at some of the major TV makers out there to see what they've got planned for ATSC 3.0 support this year. First up, let's talk about Sony, and as we mentioned earlier this week, the company's new line of Bravia XR TVs will all support ATSC 3.0. So whether you buy the 50-inch X90J 4K LCD or the Master Series 85-inch 8K model, you'll have next-gen TV support built right in from the get-go. As for Samsung, the company included ATSC 3.0 in all of its 8K models in 2020, and while we didn't have exact specs for its 2021 models in time for this video, it's pretty safe to assume the company will continue its next-gen TV support and will keep an eye on the company for updates as the year progresses. And on the LG front, the company's got some next-generation OLED display tech, which goes by the name of OLED Evo. And for 2021, models that boast that new display technology, like the G1 series, will also feature ATSC 3.0 on board. One interesting feature that LG mentioned during the ATSC 3.0 panel was that its new WebOS 6.0 smart TV platform comes with integrated support for the HD Home Run app. So other TVs in LG's 2021 line, like its lower-end OLEDs, QNEDs and NanoCell 4K and 8K models can more easily leverage the HD Home Run Connect 4Ks onboard ATSC 3.0 tuners. And we'll have much, much more about ATSC 3.0 in the coming year, and we look forward to seeing how the technology grows and matures over time. For now, though, thanks for tuning in all week long for our ongoing CES 2021 coverage. It was definitely a different experience covering news and product announcements remotely, but we hope you enjoyed the coverage. And as always, if you liked what you saw this week, please feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. For now, though, my name is Philip Palermo. Thanks for checking us out this week. Take care.